Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone out there in YouTube land. We're so glad you've joined us for our study, Praising God Through Prayer and Worship. And uh, I hope you've noticed, if you've followed along with us, that we're getting better at this craft. <laughs> Not of Bible study, but of putting the, putting the uh, videos together. <laughs> Well, at least I hope we're improving. Anyway, this morning we have Adrian in the room because our Liz is in Greece and uh, Arlene has um, other family obligations. And so here we go. Uh, so let's just say good morning to Adrian. There she is. <laughs> good morning, Ren. Oh, you're muted. I better unmute you. Good morning. <laughs> and and where we are, it's Friday morning, and it is the Friday before Mother's Day in Canada, and we are very um, thankful for our mother, who is a godly woman who always pointed us in the right direction, even when we and loved us even when we went astray. <laughs> Keeps loving us and pointing us back to Jesus. Anyway, today we are in, and I noticed as I was, <clears throat> excuse me, getting ready for this. Uh, presentation this study that I had not changed the slide for the last days so don't get confused if you see a discrepancy between what is on screen and what is written in the show notes because the show notes are correct uh, sometimes uh, things slip by me at any rate that's my story and I'm sticking with it we're uh, today we're taking up Psalm 113 to uh, Psalm 128. That's where we are. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we have again this opportunity to come together and study your word together, that we can see great and wonderful things from your law. And so we just ask that you deal with us with loving kindness and mercy and help us to understand um, what kind of people it is that you want us to be in this day and age, in the time that we live. And we are so grateful and thankful for each other, um, for the friendships and family relationships in and, uh, that, that are because of our families, but also because of the family of God. And so, Father God, just uh, open our eyes, uh, clean out our ears so we can hear well and uh, that we can hear what you have to say to us today in Jesus name amen well so we've got all our study tools out on our desk and guess who gets to read <laughs> oh dear me was that my computer making that noise or yours uh, it's not mine oh, I want these things to stop and I don't know how to make them just let me close a few things that could be causing me. I don't need any alerts. Okay, so, sorry. Sorry, everybody. Read, Adrian. I hate those who are double-minded. I love your law. You are my hiding place and my shield. I wait for your word. Depart from me, evildoers, that I may observe the commandments of my God. Sustain me according to your word, that I may live, and, and do not let me be ashamed of my hope. Uphold me, that I may be safe, that I may have regard for, the, regard for your statutes continually. You have rejected all those who wander from your statutes, for their deceitfulness is useless. You have removed all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles in fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. Wow, that is a, this is a totally different segment uh, in tone than we've had before. The last ones, oh, I didn't even uh, mark it down. But um, if we look back, there are some uh, statements in these Psalms that I have highlighted for example, in um, because we are we are studying what God is teaching us about His Word, as well as our relationship to it, and um, and uh, what our heart attitude and consequent actions should be. Um, so, in in verse eighty nine, if you flip back, I highlighted, "Forever, O Lord, Your Word is settled in heaven." 
that means that whatever God has spoken, he will bring to pass. Whatever he has declared is true, is true. Uh, whatever he expects of us is what he expects of us. His word is settled in heaven. And then if you go over to uh, verse 103, it says, How sweet are your words to my taste, yes, sweeter than honey to my mouth. And uh, I don't know if when you were a kid in the Iwana Club, whether your leaders gave you candy when you memorized verses, but I certainly gave kids candy when I was in a, a leading Awana when they memorized their verses because of this verse, your, your, your word is sweeter than honey to my mouth. And then, of course, we have verse 105, which um, was our key word, our theme verse for um, the Pioneer Girls Club that we belonged to when we were girls. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And uh, I think there, um, <clears throat> there might be uh, one of those in here, but this is a totally different tone, isn't it? Okay. So yes, it is. I uh, I hate those who are double minded. What does it mean to be double minded? Excuse me. <coughs> double minded. I'm going to look up the word on the, um, here, here's what it is in, in, in the Hebrew. Let's see if you can hear this, uh, if it plays for you. You can't hear it? You didn't hear it? Okay. I, I'm always curious whether it'll work on the, uh, it's say eif. And uh, I'm just going to flip over so that you can see what I'm looking at, maybe. I don't know whether you can say if. So that's double-minded, and it means ambivalent, divided, half-hearted. I'm not sure what you see there. Oh, skeptic, double-minded, divided in mind. Yeah, so that's the kind of, uh, the Lord doesn't admire those people kind of people either. Oh, and I learned what this, what the title of this, this is a new letter and it doesn't, I think it's Sané. Uh, the, um, see up here. Oops. Where is it? Where is it there? Sané. Uh, yeah. That's not what it's, that's not what it is. It's, it's an M. Yes, I know, but it's not pronounced that way. <laughs> it's pronounced Sané. So there, um, I, I listened to the guy uh, pronounce, pronounce it. You didn't hear the man pronounce it when I just pressed that on the internet, did you? No. Oh, okay. All right, good. All right, so I'm com coming back to uh, our... Here we you can leave that up if you want. No, no, no. Okay, so, um, all right. I hate those who are double-minded. And I'm just going to double-minded... What, what was it I said? Oh, dear, my brain. Ambivalent. <laughs> ambivalent. Half-hearted. Yeah, ambivalent. That's what I'm writing down in pencil beside that so I can remember. But I love, and we marked that, right? And that is... Mm, did we mark hate? Uh, you know what? I put a red box around that. I always do. if we have we haven't seen that all that much have we no we haven't that's why i wondered if I, yeah. i'm just gonna put a red box around it <coughs> but i love <coughs> your law so law of course we mark the way we are doing that okay now this next place you are my hiding place and my shield and i always Hiding place. We can mark that like, remember how we were marking refuge? No. Uh, it, we were marking that. We were making it like Let a little. in the back of my Bible. Well, it, we were making it like a tent. Remember? Is that what we were doing? Yeah. Yes. So yes, anyway. Sir. 
Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. Hiding place. You are my hiding place. And my shield. I wait. Okay, now I'm also mark marking these actionable things. So I wait. Now wait seems to me it's a different word. Uh-huh, and it is. Uh, the last time we saw wait uh, was in 81. We could have seen it. We could have seen it after that, but it means I hope in. I wait for your word. Your word. Okay, yeah, I got to mark that. Your. I marked hope. I marked hope a certain way. Yeah, so do I. Did I did? Our hope a certain way. Yeah. So weight can also mean. So I'm hope. gonna mark because because you had said that it was. I hope. I hope I'm in going your to word. Mark it the yeah. same way I hope. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, this is one of those verses that I'm going to mark highlighted. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. I'm yeah, just... I think that I was gonna highlight it too. All right. Good. <clears throat> And then he says, depart from me, evildoers. Well, you know what? I would evildoers, evildoers. I just marked that like sin. You could mark it like enemy. Yeah, I did too. Really didn't do that very well without a ruler next time. Well, you I could. <laughs> I'm going to make sure I have a ruler when I'm going to go to underline because that didn't look good. That I may observe... Now, observe, I think that means obey, but... Um, I believe it does. I would look it up, though. Yeah, I think it is. Well, we've been talking about observe, because it doesn't just mean looking at something. Looking at something is a bit... Um, <laughs> it's, not the, it's not all that useful, really. Okay, Adrian, I just wanted to ask you if you... So I, I, I haven't been marking obey. No. Okay. No. Uh, okay. That I may Not observe yet, the commandments, and there it is. Commandments. We put that too. Of my God. <clears throat> obey God rather than obey men. Okay. Get away from me, you evildoers. I'm going to obey the commandments of my God, basically. Okay, sustain me according to your word. There's that according to. I always mark that little phrase because it's a qualification. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a qualification. <sighs> according to your word. Why? That I may live. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I started marking live, revive uh, in a particular way. Yeah, I marked revive a certain way, but I can't remember how. <coughs> Excuse me. Just let me look. Revive is in verse 88. You weren't here when we marked uh, 107. My Bible to make sure I've. Oh no, I haven't marked it yet. Well, I okay. I mark it. It has to do I with mark life, it in so a I certain... mark it the same way as I mark life. Really. Mm -mm. I've never marked life. No. Well, I think life is a pretty important. Let me look. A pre it's a pretty important concept. <laughs> Well, yes, but I don't have marked it yet. So let me look. Okay. I've marked love, loving kindness, liberty, but I haven't marked love yet, life yet. So let me see. Go mark life in pink. Okay. 
sustain me out of mark in the bible uh, oh yeah okay so it says sustain me according to your word continue why that i may live And do not let me be ashamed. Okay, I'm marking ashamed the way I always mark that, which is kind of like this. I, I just mark it uh, ashamed and tribulation, all that trials. I mark them the same. I know it's not the same thing, but <clears throat> you don't always have the same thing in the same verse. Okay, do not let me be ashamed of my hope. Okay, so he's basically saying, I'm hoping. He's, he's trusting in God as his hope and his shield, as his hiding place and shield, and he's hoping in God's word. So don't let me be ashamed of my hope. Uphold me. Why? That I may be safe. Okay, now safe is a, is a form of the word saved. So... Oh, yes. It's a full of salvation. This is what has been so monumentally offensive to me um, during this period of lockdown amongst the rhetoric coming out of the Christian church as passed along to us by the government. And that is that we find safety in government. We find safety in pieces of cloth, that we find safety in injections. That has been so offensive to me, to my spirit. Uphold me. Who is he talking to? God. Yes. Who is our salvation? Who keeps us safe? God. Now, some people may argue, yes, but he uses other people to accomplish his purpose. And yes, I will agree that um, if God can speak through Balaam's donkey, he can speak through <laughs> anybody. And if he used people like the Assyrians and all of that to um, to scourge... Israel and to bring them back to him he can use he can use evil doers to bring about his purpose but any any christian believer in leadership of any sort even if it was a mother to a child was not teaching the person they were in charge of to trust in the Lord for safety and salvation. Well, the Lord is going to deal with that. So there you go. Okay. What irritates me, and, and I will say this because I've, ran, I've, I've been in a couple of churches where they are... Um, They're not preaching what the word. They're preaching what they the they have the Bible in front of them, but they're not led of God when they preach. They're not preaching. They're preaching. not preaching what, what it says in the context. Before the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's because in the context. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And and that's what irritates me. Yep. Me too. Okay, let's go back to what we were doing. Uphold me that I may be safe, that I may have regard for <clears throat> your statutes. And there it is. How often? Continually. Yeah, I'm putting the, um, I'm putting the, uh, what do you call that? Infinity sign over that. So there's a reason there's okay so this is this is what the psalmist always is doing and i just so admire the craftsmanship of this writing even even the translation of it in english um the reason that 
and I want to really camp here because we just talked about something. The reason that the, the psalmist is saying to uphold him for uh, petitioning God to uphold him is not so that he can be safe and secure and, you know, have the former lifestyle or whatever, <laughs> be free of illness or whatever, you know, it's that I may have regard for your statutes continually. Now, this person that's writing this is in a place of authority in the sense that it's the king of Israel who is, <coughs> he is to, he is to lead the people in righteousness and in God's law. And it was his, requ it was required of him that he make, hand write his own copy and study it and be diligent because he was in essence representing God. And this is true of us all now, all believers, that this is our responsibility we're not just to be safe, to be safe. We're to be saved, to have regard for God's statutes and to do the work that God has called us to do. Okay, that's where we're done with that now. Okay, uh, let's say you, ha okay, now we're in 118. You have rejected all those who wander from your statutes for their deceitfulness is useless. Oh, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty harsh. So God has rejected. Your screen froze. Oh, yours is yours is doing that too, dear. We God all noticed. Have rejected. So how are we gonna? We've never done this before. I don't think rejected. Let me go in the back and see if I ever wrote down rejected. P Q R S. So that's before this. Remnant reject. Redeem. Yes, I did. I put an X through the word. Where is it? Reject. I put an X through the word. Now, I did it with a particular color, so I think I'll stay with that. You have rejected. I think I will, too. Well, yes, and I know why I used that particular color, because it's the same color I used for the word judgment. Judge. You have rejected all those who wander from your statutes, your statutes. Right, get that. Uh, the other uh, last time we had a little discussion, um, Arlene and I, about uh, the difference between the word statutes, precepts, commandments, law, all of that. And, uh, oh yes, I remember I was here. Oh, were you? And, um, we can look all those things up and, and make, I use one marking. We can use different colorings when we go into this in more depth, but we're not doing that today. Okay. Okay. So I want to mark these people, all those who wander. And uh, I'm going to just underline it in the same way as I kind of, well, sure, I would if my pen would work. All those who wander. Um, actually, you know what? I remember, okay, you were in the class, you were in the session when I did that. What was that day? And I, I'm going to use that same marking as I went uh, go astray turn aside. <clears throat> you remember I, so I mark it kind of like, uh, like I do repentance, but I m do it in black because I'm, that's black for sin. All those who want deceitfulness. Where yes. Are we? That's so I mark, wonder. Yeah. Um, deceitfulness is, uh, the opposite of truth. So I'm going to mark it like truth and then put a black box around it because it's sin is useless Wonder. there's a mm -hmm. falsehood okay UBW. oh you know for their deceitfulness is it says in our text useless but in uh, my sidebar it literally means falsehood so i'm going to mark that the same way their deceitfulness is actually falsehood 
Well, that makes sense. I mean, that's ob that's a little yeah. off that's a little bit obvious. Okay. This is the time I've marked wander. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. and it's it's different. It's a different context than wandering like wandering in the desert or you know, uh, just go out for a little wander in the in the in the woods or something. <clears throat> it means literally to uh go astray. Okay, you we're in verse 119. You have removed all the wicked from the earth. All the wicked of the earth. Oops, I meant that wrong. Like dross. Do you know that that hasn't happened yet? <laughs> we marked earth too. We did. Just gotta find my marker now. Like dross. Ooh. Oh, and it and it yeah. also it also could be literally translated, "You have caused to cease all the wicked of the earth like dross." Therefore, and there it yeah. is. There's that nice word. Did I mark? Well, I want to mark that because I always mark therefore a certain way. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I love your testimonies. Oh, there's. your testimonies okay and think about the, word, the, the, law? the ink oh, i beg your pardon are we marking testimonies the same as law yes yes and uh so here so think about okay. this uh testimonies comes from a latin root the the english word that we have as testimonies comes from a latin root and that also has in its family testament. So. Oh, yes. Right? Yes. So we have God's testament, testimonies. We have the Old Testament and the New Testament. Therefore, I love my flesh trembles for fear of you. I'm in verse 120. Mark fear. Yeah, I'm just doing, I'm underlining the phrase, trembles for fear of you. And I am afraid. Of your. And I must point out. I must point out. Go for it. That this is not a fear as in. Um, this is a healthy fear. This is not a. Yeah, but it is definitely fear. This is okay. So there has there's been a, a difference between an unhealthy fear and a healthy fear. This is a healthy fear. Yes. Yes. This is not paranoia. This is realizing. Exactly. This is realizing who God truly is and what he is able to do. And what he has promised to do, both blessing and cursing. Exactly. And having a reverent, healthy, awesome fear of that. Exactly. I, I think, though, exactly. however, when you were saying that, I was going to say something, and I'm going to say it in addendum to what you said, that it started to come about in the 70s that people started preaching that with an over preponderance of not fear and trembling like i'm terrified uh in terms of god right which i think is a subtle falsehood because every single person in the bible who heard the voice of god audible Trembled in fear. Yeah, or fell flat on their faces. And some of them fainted. Exactly. And so exactly. when you understand, and this is, so I'm going to refute that false teaching that has gone about. No, God loves us, yes. 
but he is the righteous judge. And if you are not afraid of standing before him and answering for every idle word that you ever spoke, you don't have a true understanding of who God is. True. His judgment is held in check because he is not, he does not want that any should perish, but all that should come to repentance. We learn this. God is merciful and just. But if you don't fear, I am, and this is what he says. Listen, my fresh tr flesh trembles for fear of you, and I'm afraid of your judgments. This psalmist has had the testimony of the people who have gone before to remind him of what actually God did do in judgment. He flooded the whole world and he killed all living creatures except for those who were on the ark. Exactly. That's something to be feared. Yes. And you, you know what? And the thing is, is if you were, I mean, unless you were a total ignoramus, you would never walk into any royalty's throne room just casually with your mud on your shoes and, you know, like dung on there. You wouldn't do it. And yet we treat no, you wouldn't. <laughs> our holy God a lot, you know, oftentimes in this way. All right. We have to yes. write a summary of this now. I want to do this thing about hope in here. Uh, we, you know what? And how bad is this? We didn't summarize the one, the segment before. But the segment from 97 to 104, we said, meditation on God's word brings wisdom and understanding. I don't, we didn't, oh, that's terrible. I'm going to have to go back. I don't um, want to think about that. I want to think about today's. Um, I just put, I hope because you have sustained me. Yeah, I'm going to say, I hope in your word. I hope oh, I didn't... in your mm. word, which sustains me. Good one. Thank you. I got the clue from you. All right. Well, I was there. Okay. Verse 121. You ready? Oh, you froze too. Yeah. Okay. I have done justice and righteousness. Okay, so I mark justice one way. And I mark righteousness. Do not leave me to my oppressors. Okay, so I'm marking that as enemies. So he is petitioning the Lord on the basis of his practice of God's word. All right. Verse 122. Be surety for your servant for good. Oh, good. I'm marking that. Oh, we've been marking good. We started marking good. Good. How did I do that? Oh, oh I didn't know that. So let me see. Yeah, but it, it hasn't been. It, oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. It's way back in the segment 65. I don't know if you were there, if you were in the class then. I probably wasn't because I've got so much school going on. Yes. Okay, <laughs> so good. Be surety for your servant for good. <clears throat> be sure to you know what i'm coming i'm going to go back to my the screen share here and see if we fix this <laughs> let me see i've done okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to be see 
I'm going to see what it says. Be surety. I'm going to hear what that guy says to pronounce it. Oh, I can't. I rev. Surety. I rev. It's written like uh, Arab. I rev. See, wait, the English. And what does that mean? Okay. Okay. It means to pledge, uh, take on pledge, go surety for, give in pledge, to exchange. Hmm. Okay. Be surety. That's <coughs> putting up the bail. <laughs> bail bond. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, be surety for your servant for good. Do not let the arrogant, oh, I mark them as evildoers. Do not let the arrogant. I put the arrogant oppressed in one box. Did you? Yeah. Okay. And I'm marking oppressed like being and ashamed. I'm going, to, I'm going to separate it though. I'm going to, like, I mean, I'm going to color in arrogant. Okay. Yeah, you so all the people out there in YouTube world, um, as we are marking key words and phrases like this, we each of us has our own connotations to color uh, because of the kind of colors that we like. Exactly. And our favorite colors and all of that. And they have different connotations to us for things. Uh, let me tell you, I'm going to tell you what my connotation for oppression and trial and tribulation is, it's purple. Because to me, that stands for bruises. Does that make sense? Now, other people, other people, yeah. purple is their favorite color and they would never, they would not mark purple as, or it either means, it, so in this case, it means bruises, but it also means royalty to me, right? But what happens is we develop our system of marking and we keep track of it in the concordance. Or if you don't have a concordance, you can make a bookmark, which is what precept upon precept, uh, precept ministries suggests is that you keep a bookmark. And so that could be like a, a recipe card that you keep in your Bible. And as you ha ha um, discover keywords, um, then you just mark them on your bookmark and use that. Okay. Verse 123, my eyes fail with longing for your salvation. Well, I don't even know how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to mark your and salvation. That's a, that is a really strong emotion he's expressing, isn't it? My eyes fail for longing. We have seen uh, before that Oh, and I'm, my pen just ran out for that color. That's annoying. Okay. <clears throat> my eyes fail with longing for your salvation and for your righteous word. If you look at the side, it means promise. Promise is the word? Ah, okay. yeah. If you look at yes, yes, I sidebar, do. Sidebar, it says okay. there's number one. Mm -hmm. So I'm just because there's space, I'm just marking my. I marked word like word, but promise I'm put in the uh, in the white space next to it. Yeah. Um. So this implies diligent study to me. My eyes fail with longing for your salvation, for your righteous word. So he's really looking intently to understand. Yes. And to uh, see God fulfill his promises. Now we have to remember that. <clears throat> okay, so in, in uh, Dave, David's life, he was promised that a king would be on his throne forever. <clears throat> and there were promises that yes. 
that he was looking forward to that did not yet get fulfilled, like Messiah was not, you know. So all of this, my eyes fail with longing for yourself. Exactly, yeah. I was thinking about that just now. It came to me because, you know, when I was a child growing up in church and Sunday school, um, the particular church and leaders that we had taught us, or maybe it was our grandparents, I don't know. Uh, I'm that much older than you, so probably it's a different story for you, but um, they taught us that Jesus is coming again. We don't know the day or the hour. Yes. Okay. And so when I was a kid, and even now, is this still in my heart? If I see a certain kind of cloud in the sky, you know, with the sun rays coming out of it, I think, oh, oh I love those. Oh, Lord, is it, are, are you coming today? <laughs> you know? And so I, I know to some people that seems like a simpleton thing, but for me, it, it's the same feeling in my heart as my eyes fill with longing for your salvation, for your righteous word, that the, that the psalmist, at least that's my assumption. Okay, let's go to yeah. 124. <clears throat> Eager anticipation. Deal with your yeah. servant. Oh, and there's according to again. How did I mark according to? Well, we just marked it in uh, verse 116. There it is. Yeah, I see it now. According to your... Now, now you see, I could never have seen that if it was just the text. But because I'd made the marking, I could find the marking. And and so... Yeah, that's, well, another, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, and that's another benefit of, of marking and being consistent in your marking you know what you're looking for. You know, I saw that somewhere. Where is it? And you can just go, and there it is. According to what? Well, I, I couldn't remember. I, I knew I marked it, but I didn't remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so deal with your servant how? According to your loving kindness. Now, isn't this funny? He, at the beginning, he says, I've done justice and righteousness. Don't leave me to my oppressors. So he's pleading on behalf of his actions, but here it's deal with your servant according to your loving kindness. He's, he's pleading for God's mercy. And teach me your statutes. Okay, so we've been marking teach. I don't know if you have or not. Yeah, I just I just realized I, I hadn't been marking it. I thought I'd mark it. So I am going to, that's a something I have to get out. Okay, good. I am your servant. Your servant. Give me understanding. There it is. Teach understanding, wisdom. I'm marking them all right now the same. That why? <clears throat> There's a reason. Teach me. Give me understanding. Why? That I may know your testimonies okay i'm marking may know in the same way as i marked teach and understanding your testimony so it seems really obvious now here that he's taking his job as god's king very seriously would you say yes Because he's not just the king of Israel. He's God's king of Israel. He's taking, exactly. it, very, taking it very seriously. Okay, good. Uh, verse 126. Six. It is time for the Lord, and that's Jehovah because it's all caps, to act. Why? For, for they have broken your law. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Who is they? Well, uh, I would say the enemy. Well, who has he been talking about? The oppressors. The Yes. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. They have broken your law. Okay, now we have the next connecting word. Therefore. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I love your commandments. Above gold. Yes, above fine gold. That was not true of David's son, unfortunately. No, I agree. Well, he amassed great wit riches. <laughs> I said great witches. Because <laughs> I was thinking of his wives <laughs> at the same time as I was thinking of riches. Yeah, and it doesn't seem like that's a bad... There's assessment. another therefore. Oh, is there? Okay, hang on a second. I love your commandments. Yep. Above gold. Okay, yes. Okay, so there we're at the last verse. Okay, 128. Therefore, I esteem right. And I'm marking that righteous. You could mark it as good, but I'm, I'm marking um, it. Okay. All your precepts concerning everything. Everything. And here's hate again, my dear. I hate. Yes, I agree. Every false way. Okay, so I'm marking false way. The same way as I marked deceitfulness and useless. Uh, that was back in 118. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, that this would be the heart of God's people. You know, this yes. is very convic convicting. <clears throat> I love your commandments above gold. Yes, above fine gold. Therefore, I esteem right all your precepts concerning everything. Those are two superlatives. <clears throat> I'm going to mark that. Yes. All your precepts concerning everything. I hate every false way. Do you know what? I have that in my heart too. And the reason I have that in my heart is because of my involvement with the occult and new age and how hellishly destructive that was in my life and in my relationships, how hellishly destructive that that was to my well-being and to the well-being of the people around me, the people that I was involved with, with the relationships in my family. <clears throat> Those kind of hellish philosophies and false gods and false religion drove a wedge between me and God that God never intended, but it also drove a wedge between me and my godly heritage. A hellish uh, thing. I, I, you know, I, I, I'm old now. I'm, I'm, I'm as old as my grandmother once was <laughs> when I was a brat. When I was being a brat, my grandmother was my age. And uh, I can't imagine how her heart hurt to see how far astray and how ungodly and self-destructive I had become after all the things that she had taught me in my childhood. I am so looking forward to, to heaven and seeing our grandmother again. I am so looking forward to seeing her again and telling her, thank you, thank you. And my grandpa, our grandpa, say, thank you, thank you, thank you 
for taking us and making sure we 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 knew Jesus. Yeah. Really and truly. And it is at the point now I est and here is this thing. Listen to what he's saying. I esteem right all your precepts concerning everything. In other words, there's nothing and this is, isn't this what we were learning in Second Peter? Just let me read this. So, so amazing. Hebrews, James, first and second. Oh, it's after James. First and second Peter. In Second Peter. Is it Second Peter? Yes. Uh, I'm going to start at verse 2 because I hate taking sentences out of context. Grace and peace. This is right at the beginning. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises, so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. And that corruption that's in the world by lust is exactly what the occult is about, is exactly what the new age is about. Exactly. But we have escaped this corruption it's corruption. It's corruption. And it corrupts your relationships and everything. And here it says, <clears throat> Therefore I esteem right all your precepts concerning everything. I hate every false way. I just really pray that those who are watching, participating in this, that somewhere down the line, that you will allow the Lord to cleanse your mind of all the things that are contrary to his word that you have absorbed somewhere along the line in your life, uh, whether it be by school teaching or by mandate or by false teaching, by false priests, preachers, and that you would come to esteem God's precepts, that you would esteem his word above everything. Because in that is your hiding place, your shield, your growth, your life, your life. It's your very life. How are you going to uh, summarize this? I'm thinking about that. You deal with me according to your loving kindness. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put into in there something about. Uh, about the uh, oppressors. You know, it's funny because, yeah, I'm a, there are oppressors in my life, but I seem to be my own biggest oppressor. <laughs> how so? In a lot of way, areas. How so? How so? Well, you know, it's, it's you know, well, for instance, my smoking oppresses me. Mm. Um, and in other areas of my life, my, my anxiety, my, um, my depression, it, it all oppresses me. It's my own oppression. The outside forces that oppress me just add on to my own, what I already deal with mm -hmm. <laughs> lately, you know? Mm -hmm. So... That was why it was important for me to write that because I, 
Yeah. Yes. Do you know what? I, 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 we didn't make note of this. 126. I'm going to put a, an alarm clock. Why am I going to put an alarm clock in the margin there? Because it's a time freeze. Yes, it's time for the Lord to act. Yeah. You know, and, and in this world that we live in, as we observe wickedness increasing, lawlessness increasing, um, I don't think this is an unreasonable thing to pray. <laughs> it's time for the Lord to act. They've broken your law. Okay, keep me from oppressors, I for I esteem your precepts right. Keep me from oppressors. I esteem your, and I'm going to just put your word absolutely right. So in reference to what you said, I think it's very important that people have always in the last maybe 20 years have been told, telling us uh, to keep short accounts with God and with each other. <clears throat> that means that um, when sin is pointed out to us in our lives, no matter how the Lord points it out or through whose, through whose mouth, <laughs> that we need to be really swift to um, to take it up with him and say, this is, you know, and repent and ask for cleansing and strength. And if it has to do with temptation, you know, I mean, he delights in, in uh, helping us overcome that and to show the way of escape. So, um, yeah, short accounts with God and, and asking him the way of escape that we may be able to bear up under the temptation because, you know, God is not the one that's tempting us. We know this from all of our other Bible studies. He can't do that. He That's not his way. That's not who he is. I don't know what, was it James that we learned that in there? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, but we do know that no temptation hath overtaken us but such as is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we were, we are able, but will with the temptation also make the way of escape that we may be able to bear up under it. And so, you know, we, this is the whole thing of keeping short accounts with the Lord and going back to his word and saying, you said that. You said you'd make a way of escape. Where's the way of escape? <laughs> Show me the way of escape. Well, you know, when I was quitting smoking, the way of escape was changing one small habit. One of the ways of escape. I'm not saying yeah. that. But one of the ways of escape was changing one small habit. And the small habit was, what did I do the first thing when I got up in the morning? Had a coffee and a smoke. Yeah, exactly. And so, <laughs> and so what the one small habit that I, that's the small habit that I changed to, because I, uh, I had to break a, a, a bunch of habits that fell after that. So I just, instead of getting up and having a smoke and a coffee, I would put my sneakers on. Well, I would get dressed first, of course. <laughs> and I put my sneakers on and go for a brisk walk. <laughs> I went yeah. for, uh, that first thing in the morning, went for a brisk walk and I broke that habit. So then I said, okay, I've waited this long for my coffee and cigarette. I'm going to have a coffee, but I'm not having a smoke. And that, that, that helped to break that. That was just, you know, the way of escape for me was, and I, you know, a lot of people, when they quit smoking, they start eating Well, I started walking. Oh yeah, that's and, me. And so rather I than eating. eating well, that's that whole mouth thing, you know, that whole mouth addiction. Um, so instead of it's eating. That whole head mouth thing. Yeah, yeah. So that whole thing with me, it was different because I went for a walk. I didn't put something in my mouth. I went for a walk and I delayed gratification for the cup of coffee. And I actually lost weight <laughs> when I when I quit smoking. 
because I got more fit. But anyway, that was the way that, oh, that the Lord, that was the, the thing that the Lord helped me. That was my way of escape for that. One, one of the th ways of escape. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, so we pray for people who are really are interested in um, breaking some bad habits and uh, finding the way of escape. But uh, as we ask for the way of escape, the Lord is delighted to show us. That's what he, his word promises, and that's why it says, Therefore I esteem right all your precepts concerning everything. Everything we need for life in godliness is found in... Oh, isn't that a nice back? <laughs> it's found in here in our Bibles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I put nice tape on mine to hold it together. <laughs> I'm not done with this Bible yet. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> I hope this has been helpful to uh, everyone who's participated so far. Let's go to prayer and then we'll say goodbye until the next time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just pray that you would create in us uh, a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us that that can say these things as the as the prophet and as the psalmist says that you are our hiding place and our shield and that we hope in your word and that as we learn your word and as we study your word and as we apply your word and as we meditate upon your word that we come to understand and to see and to acknowledge and submit to the fact that all you say is right and true and that we uh, order our lives underneath your guidance this way. Father God, as we do this, we expect your blessing. We expect supernatural peace. <clears throat> We expect to see the, the, the peace that comes for the one whose mind is completely stayed secure upon you. We know your word is right and it is good. And we trust you in your promises. And we'll cling to them even when there's a storm coming as if it is a, uh, an anchor for our soul because it is. And so, Lord Jesus, I just pray that you would continue to grow and bless each one who is studying along with us and those who are studying worldwide to know and apply your word in this world, in this time, in these circumstances and make us a light and a beacon of hope, of your hope to those who are lost and hurting and floundering in the darkness. In Jesus I pray, amen. All right, you folks, it's been really nice to see you. And so we'll see you in the next one. God bless. Mm -hmm.